Oh, come on. Ah, I, I totally wanted those picture frames to fall. It's a new grimy aesthetic, guys. Top-notch operation here, only the best for you. <sighs> Let's just get into this. What's going on everyone, Seth Miranda here. This is Adorama Rewind and a bunch of fun stuff came out this week and I got to play with some of it. Uh, and more stuff is coming. Trust me, we've been filming a ton of new product videos right here at Adorama TV. So if you wanna get notified when those videos come out so you can stay up on all of it, don't forget to subscribe and the bell so you get those notifications when those videos come out. All right, let's just jump right into this. Uh, starting off with the Pro Photo announcement or basically release because it's available now. Photo B10 and the Photo B10 Plus were awesome releases for them. They shrunk down their lights. They made them really sleek, had Bluetooth capability so that you could have the control of all the menus in your phone if you wanted. Also able to use your phone as the camera and use them as a flash, but that's not kind of the big deal. I'm sure there's more coming to it. I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit, but the real thing with these lights were they kind of mixed constant and strobe together. They were usable constant lights with a modeling light also being bicolor, so you could adjust the temperature of them, but they were bright enough to be used for things like video or even shooting constant light for stills and other applications. I use them myself on my own YouTube channel in a pinch. It's always in my head that I have a constant light even though I brought just my strobes. It's kind of a cool thing to have in your head that you can crutch on if you need it. Well, I got to try out the new ones, the B10X and the B10X Plus. The B10X still 250 watt seconds, the B10X Plus still 500 watt seconds, but they gave you a boost in the constant light, which is the modeling light. They gave you about 30% more power and they gave you a little bit of a shave down on the uh, flash recycle, which went from two seconds to 1.35 seconds on the B10 and 2.5 seconds to just two seconds on the B10 plus the 500 watt second version of it. But you get a little bit of boost in the lumens for the constant light. So they are rating them at 3,250 lumens. So right here, you can see I have the B10X in the background and the B10X plus 500 watt second uh, model right here is my key light. That shows you how big it is. That's my hand basically covering half this light already. They're super light for what they are and they're super versatile. So I always questioned having the model light being brighter and if it would even be bright enough for video, would I be able to use it? And since I was already using the previous models for that, I was able to use these models for it as well because this whole video, my talking head was shot, look at that face, was shot with the modeling lights on the strobes themselves. And I did some cool stuff like shutter drags to show you the same setup I would normally do with a high output tungsten halogen light and a strobe done with just the modeling light and a strobe just to give you uh, more of a frame of reference of a use case for it rather than just give you a bunch of specs. Now this is pretty awesome because we're in a hybrid era. I mean, I myself never thought I would care about the brightness of my modeling light. They're giving us 30% more brightness on these strobes uh, modeling light as opposed to the original, which already had a really bright modeling light. It's just more usable here. But being a hybrid shooter now, more that I have to film myself, I wanna carry less gear, I'm self-producing, right? If I don't have to carry a good, you know, a pretty good constant light and my strobes to get through a video, if I just do the video of me using the strobes and then use the strobes themselves on the mild light to film myself, it cuts down half my gear. It's an investment that I don't have to make on another kit. All sorts of reasons for this. I'm not trying to sell you on it. I'm just really excited about the way studio lighting is going. If we're starting to see lights that give us a two for one ability, it's awesome. Uh, and of course it's a pro photo system. So you get the reliability of it firing. Then I don't see any color shifts happening. Uh, not to mention the cohesion of the system that everything fits on everything else. I'm not gonna go down that road with you. I'm sure there's people that have you know, their, their, uh, their fandom for whatever brand they're using. And hey, you're welcome to use whatever you wanna use. I've been using these and I really like them. So check out that video if you get a chance. Uh, it's also a little bit of a demo on shutter drag. If you're into that kind of technique, maybe this will help you out with some stuff. And uh, there's some other stuff going on. As far as the Bluetooth goes in the lights, like I mentioned, you're able to have all the menus for the light in your phone. So you don't, if you're on location, you can't reach the light or whatever, you can actually go into your phone and hit every function that's in the light right there in the app. But you're also able to use their camera app and use these lights as a strobe for your phone. Not saying that anybody would buy lights this, 
caliber to just use with your phone, but it's another thing you're able to do. And I'm sure there's applications for it, but what I think, and I might be completely wrong, keep banging this table, sorry if you're getting seasick. What I think is happening, which I might be completely wrong, is the Bluetooth is enabling us to see the menus. Well, our cameras also have Bluetooth and Profoto's overdue for a new trigger system. I think we can all agree on that, right? Well, what if the menus to these lights actually end up in the cameras and we don't have to worry about using an app on our phone. We can actually get to the entire interface of the light in our cameras. I'm wondering if that's a possibility. I'm sure some people think I'm crazy. Maybe it's wishful thinking, but it's not out of the question. And I usually hate Bluetooth. These were a breeze. I just saw them like that on my phone. I thought it was gonna be annoying pairing them. One of the coolest things though, I, I'm harping on these lights, I'm sorry. One of the coolest things I found though, is as soon as I turned them on, I paired it to my phone, which was split second, I could update the firmware in the light right there on the spot. It took about 45 seconds to update the firmware and I was good to go. And I know not every lighting system is easy to upgrade the firmware and more reliability features and things come out with the firmware, bug uh, fixes and things. We're in the era of firmware. So anything that makes it easier, I'm gonna give a, a thumbs up to. All right, I, I've been on those for too long. Go check out my video, drop a comment, I'd appreciate it. Let's talk about Sigma. Sigma put out two lenses and they are from the contemporary line. So you have the 24 millimeter F2 and the 90 millimeter F2.8. Uh, the contemporary line is interesting. It is kind of a nod to film era type lenses. Uh, for me, it's more about the fact that they're compact, they're light, and they're well built, but they're still pretty low cost. We're talking about these lenses being sub $700, about 640 bucks, I think. Yeah, so 640 about right at the time of this recording. So the Sigma 24 millimeter F2, really nice lens to have. F2 is a nice speed. And the 90 millimeter, I feel, is a really good portrait type focal length and um, among other things. I think that Sigma's been killing it lately and this just shows that they're pushing forward more and more and more. You can check out our video on it. These are the lenses right here, looking nice and sleek. Our boy Cooper went crazy with them, shooting portraits of his model. So you can see the image quality, what you're getting out of it, the characteristics of the glass and all that sorts of stuff. He goes into it pretty deep. It's a pretty quick watch, it's three minutes, so go give it a look, uh, especially if you're a Sigma fan, you might be interested in some of these. Or if you're looking for something for the E-mount or like a Sigma and Lumix uh, L-mount, these are some good options for you. So go check that one out. Moving along, let's, speaking of Leica with the L-mount and all that stuff, even though this camera doesn't have the L-mount. Mm, bad segue, Seth, bad segue. Leica unveiled the Q2 007 edition with a gun barrel lens cap. So uh, some people are like, this is cool, and some people are like, this is cringy. I think it's pretty cool. I think Leica has always been more about um, aesthetics and collectability and just pure quality. And I could totally see them having a fan base of well-off people that are James Bond fans that would totally buy this as a collectible. Uh, it's a limited edition, of course. It's to celebrate the 25th year of No Time to Die. I kind of just want the lens cap. Am I crazy? I think the lens cap is the coolest part. The colorway is kind of cool. The color scheme is pretty nice with the uh, this like deep alligatory looking Green comes in this case, which is pretty baller. I get it, it's not for everybody. I myself am not a James Bond fan, really. Uh, but the $8,000 price point and the limited edition kind of puts it in the, in the, I buy it and collect it and maybe one day it's worth some more money later on kind of a thing. Leica has always done this kind of stuff. They put out so many special editions and they've always been really cool. In fact, Leica once put out a camera that I was like, oh man, they put out the stealth edition that had no markings on it. It was all black except the markings glow in the dark. And I thought it was just one of the coolest things ever. Of course, you know, up there in price, but it has only gained in value. I see them on eBay all the time, breaking price points that I was like, oh my gosh, I wonder if anyone's actually paying that price for these things. But you can't deny Leica is a quality product that uh, also has kind of the Rolex thing going on for it. You know, you don't just buy it for the camera, you buy it because it's that specific Leica. And you know what, people, I, wrote, I read the comments on, you know, the Petapixel articles like that. You can say what you want, but I'm happy that there's a company out there that does kind of stuff like this. We have plenty of companies that are just spec fiends and hype machines and give us hardcore performance and stuff like that. Let there be one that's this luxury brand. Let there be one that has some sort of tying to collaborations to the world outside of photography and bridges gaps and all sorts of stuff. It's just 
cool to see that. I mean, Polaroid used to put out one-step Polaroids for Spice Girls, Barbie. Uh, there were special edition Kodak cameras for the Girl Scouts. Uh, there was, I think there was a Transformers version of the Polaroid camera. You could go down a rabbit hole of special edition cameras that aren't $8,000, but they're just cool that they're out there. Maybe I'm being a little like uh, Kamakani type fan here, but I'm all for it. Uh, just not a James Bond guy. Never been, never been for that. I wanted to let you guys know that this Wednesday, September 15th, the man, Joe McNally, is stopping by Adorama, and I'll be going live with him. So you can join us over here at Adorama's Twitch channel at 11 a.m. Eastern. We'll be just hanging out on the second floor of Adorama, chilling and doing a lighting jam. So you guys can come hang out with us while we mess around with some lighting, answer some of your questions, do some techniques on the spot, and just have a good time chilling. No pressure, no real goal there. We're just two guys guys with cameras and lights hanging out and with you in the chat room so don't sleep on that join us on twitch.tv slash adorama xp link is down below if you haven't joined the twitch channel you're missing out i got a lot of other stuff coming for it but at 1 p.m on wednesday me and joe will be sitting down on adorama's instagram to answer all your questions it is an ask us anything session there will be a question sticker up earlier in the day. You can fill it out in the stories mode of Adorama's Instagram. And then at 1 p.m. Eastern, we will jump on live and start fielding those questions and just having a cool chat. Don't forget, Joe just got back from the Olympics in Tokyo. And Joe has had a big part in capturing what happened on the events of 9-11 with his 9-11 uh, portraits and everything like that with the life-size Polaroids and stuff. So he's got a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of things that are very relevant to right now. And he's a good friend of mine. I'm, I'm really psyched just hang out with him for a minute. It's been a while. So come hang out with us 11 a.m. Eastern on Adorama's Twitch channel, Adorama XP on Twitch, and then 1 p.m. Eastern time on Adorama's Instagram. Speaking of things that are super relevant, Adorama just dropped the Crypto Art Revolution documentary. So this was put out by, or put together, I should say, rather, by our own Sal D'Elia, who is behind uh, New York Rhapsody, the short film that we put out, all the TTL episodes right here on Adorama TV, and it takes you through what NFTs and crypto art is all about. Now, I don't want to get this into a crazy debate in the comments or whatever. Whatever your perspective is on this, whether you're for it, against it, you think it's this, you think it's that, you're excited for it, you're not excited for it, you think it's a revolution, you think it's a fad, whatever you think, this covers all sides of it from the perspective of people that are legit in it right now. So if you have any questions about what's going on, Check out this uh, documentary. You'll be pretty surprised. I think we hear a lot about the money aspect and a lot about the stock type feel of it and crypto this and NFT that, but this is from the creators. Sal made a point of creating this documentary with the community, by the community, for the community. Now, I don't, I'm not on either side of this. I have no investment here or there creating or buying NFTs or crypto art. It's new to me as well. But I learned a lot from this documentary and I saw a lot of perspectives that I wouldn't have seen otherwise. So please do me a favor, do Adorama a favor and just check out this documentary. It's a good watch and it was put together during a very difficult time. So I, this is hats off to Sal pulling this off. And uh, this is the kind of stuff that Adorama is looking to constantly put out there, be super relevant, high quality content and educational, regardless of whether you agree with it or not. Uh, it, it's good to be informed, all right? I think we can all agree on, we can agree on that, right? A little bit, a little bit. All right, now I mentioned Adorama's Twitch channel before. Let me just jump over to it really quick to let you guys know what just happened this Sunday, which is pretty cool. We did our bi-monthly gaming tournament and we raised some money for Breast Cancer Research Foundation playing Guilty Gear Strive. Uh, for Intel Gamer Days. So if you're into Guilty Gear, check it out. It's, uh, it was a really, really intense competition. Some amazing players, some great, great sponsors, BenQ, MSI, Azus, WD Black, Seagate, and it was all put together by Panda Global. And we raised some good money for Breast Cancer Research Foundation. So thank you to everybody, from, personally from me and from Adorama and everyone else for uh, donating to a good cause to help out breast cancer research. Now the reason I'm bringing up the Twitch page is pretty much because there's special events happening all the time. We just did uh, DaVinci Resolve classes for you guys, three days of it with uh, Casey Ferris uh, a couple of weeks ago. I am now working on having Capture One do a three day series as well to answer your questions, take you through the program. I, mean, I know there's a lot of questions about Capture One whenever me and Daniel go live and we show our tethering to it. Uh, everyone always asks questions about it. So I, I talked to Capture One. Not only are they going to be doing something on our Twitch channel next month, keep watch for it, but 
They are also now in our Discord. So the Discord Adorama XP has a Capture One channel right here with the orange heart. And Maria and Liz from Capture One, direct representatives of Capture One are now sitting there in our Discord, able to be a resource to you guys. And this is kind of where I'm hoping to grow the Discord. I'm gonna work on getting more brand reps, company reps, and people that can actually be a really good resource to you guys uh, as far as what you're trying to do out there, questions you've always had, and other things. And even without having pure representatives from the brands in here, uh, the community itself has been incredibly supportive. There's rock stars all over that Discord that are sharing work, sharing their experiences, their point of view, and giving you their experiences, and some of them are really insightful. So do yourself a favor, go get in the Discord. The link is down below. If you're not on Discord, you're missing out on a really good platform. It's a great way to uh, keep a conversation going or plug into things that you might not know a lot about but learn on the spot, ask questions. Go hit it up now. You can go ask some Capture One questions right there in Discord. And I'm there as well, along with a few of the other hosts here at Adorama. So I would love to see you over there. Oh, and speaking of the Twitch channel, today is Sunday when I release these, 5 p.m. Eastern. Well, 7 p.m. Eastern, we go live on Adorama's Twitch channel with the gaming news. So Sony just had a humongous, awesome, finally awesome, uh, showcase for all the new game trailers. We're going to talk about it live tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. Come join me and Josh Soleil on Adorama XP. That's where we're going to keep the gaming news so we don't, you know, upset all you photo nerd only people here, okay? So for shout out of the week, I'm going to throw it over to uh, my guy over here. Some of you might already know him. He's been a very positive uh, member of the photo community. He's been very helpful as far as education, cluing people into learning about things that they should know about, people they should know about, and just being, just, it's nice to have like a, a just a good guy presence. I'm gonna throw it out to Ant Pruitt right here. So give him a follow, he has a podcast, you can check it out on twit.tv. He uh, is just a really chill dude, knows a lot about what he's doing, uh, uses all sorts of gear that you might be into knowing more about, and he shares a lot of insight. I mean, look, our own David Bergman was on his podcast giving sports photography tips. I know Vanessa Joy was on there, and uh, I might be on there. So uh, don't forget to check out Ant Pruitt on Instagram, because this is about community, and we do shout outs to help each other out. So question of the week. The like a thing actually got me thinking. What are some collaborations you guys like to see out there? You know, things that aren't photo related, collaborating with photo brands. And I, I always keep, I don't know why this always pops in my head, but I keep thinking about Nintendo and Fuji Film. And recently, Nintendo Switch is able to print photos from the Nintendo Switch into a Fuji Film Instax printer. Yeah. So they are, I think, putting it, or they have already put out a case, like a Pokemon case for the Instax printer, but what if they did like, I don't know, an, a limited edition Fujifilm uh, X series that had a Zelda colorway or a Mario colorway or something like that? You know, something that's not like cartoons on it, but just the color of the, those uh, franchises like on the camera. I don't know, I think that'd be kind of cool. Let me know down below what kind of collaboration you would be interested in. Not even if you wanted to buy it, just something that you think would be cool to exist out there. Let me know down below what is a feasible collaboration for you guys. Also, I'm just kind of curious what the Adorama audience fandom is out there. I know we have a lot of cosplay photographers. I know we have a lot of gamers out there. But there's also fashion, right? Like, why couldn't there be a Louis Vuitton version of whatever or a Prada version of this? Uh, you could even see something like camera bags getting more and more fashion oriented, making them look less like camera bags with a, a, a flag on your back that, hey, I got camera gear on me, but looking more fashionable. I think we're seeing smaller companies that came recently, you know, Peak Design, Wandered, paying attention to things like that, but still being utility. But what's like a collaboration? Would you want to see a Valentino uh, camera bag? I don't know. Hit me with a comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. All right, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to hit me up on all that social media junk at Last X Witness. Check out my work on Instagram. Join me on Twitter for some discussion. Tag me in some stuff. If you think there's an article that we should talk about right here on Adorama Rewind, I will take a look at it and see if it's a good candidate. You never know. Give you a quick shout out. It's all good, right? All right, well, till then, don't forget to like, share this video around, hit subscribe, plus the bell to get notified when Adorama actually puts out some videos for you guys, which is like twice a day. You've probably been missing out on a whole bunch. Go check them out, and I'll see you next time. Later.